Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Glad to have this man back, former NYPD officer and my good friend, my paisan, Sal Greco. Sal, how are you? Good to see you. It's good to be back, Joe. You know, we got to get you in the entire American Civil Rights League. <laughs> That's where you're going to be. I, I, I want to be in there. Roger Stone has been talking to me about that. We have to find, find out how to get membership, and I know there's a big event coming up. But I want people to understand uh, who you are. I've had you on a few times. We've been friends for a while now. Um, and you're a former NYPD cop who was fired, you say, because you were friends with Roger Stone. And they were literally saying that you were cavorting with a convicted criminal or something. Roger, of course, has been pardoned, so I don't know what that's all about anymore anyway. But you gave great examples of how the, the NYPD commissioner was walking around, or the chiefs were walking around with, with people who have known criminal records. Who was it? Was it, uh, was it Cardi B or somebody who was Cardi there? Cardi B was one. Of course, this nightclub that was owned by the police commissioner's brother at the time, Right. Ed Caban's brother, Richard Caban, called Conso Frito with the uh, co-manager of the place, right. uh, Jimmy Rodriguez, who's a self-admitted criminal mob associate. That's the guy they shouldn't be hanging around with. Well, well what's interesting is, and we've talked about this at length, both in person, over dinner, and uh, and also on my show, You did. you're fighting this fight not for you. You're fighting this fight for your father because that name is that important to you. And you 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 want to make sure that the legacy of of the Greco name is not stained by this BS thing that they did to you. So I mean, today it looks a lot like Sal Greco is is vindicated. Tell me when you found out about the indictment against uh, Eric Adams, who you've been on you've been going after Eric Adams since day one, rightfully so. I mean, so much so that like three in the morning you'll send me a text. I'm like, Sal, stop! What are you doing? But you were right the entire time. Do you feel vindicated today? It is a slight vindication, but it's also a very sad day, Joe, to see the sitting mayor of New York City, the the, 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 the shiny city on the hill, have its leader be indicted. And it's, you know, we saw this in the past when, when I mean, it was way before our time with Jimmy Walker and then William O'Dwyer. But I mean, no one's ever been sitting mayor and getting indicted. And I feel extremely sorry for the New York City taxpayer and residents who's been fleeced by this man. He has sexual harassment, assault lawsuits that the city's illegally representing him in. And now you're hearing about this indictment, Joe, and it's just like bribery. He accepted $10 million in that 10 to 1, the matching funds, the straw donors. He fleeced $10 million off of that using a foreign uh, country. Joe, this is, this is crazy. I, I don't know what this man was thinking, uh, Eric Adams. Well, a, a couple of things. First of all, we'll say alleged. And police say or prosecutors say that he did this. Mm -hmm. But the story is just what you said. Yeah. Allegedly, $10 million of taxpayer public money somehow goes into his campaign coffers. And you mentioned that nightclub that I also know that Letitia James, I think that you've shown me pictures of her going to this Consofrito place, whatever it is. Correct. Um, but isn't she the one that's charging him? No. Here's the... Here's the oh, the I thought it was. The crazy part here, Joe is there's two individuals here that their silence has been deafening since this entire thing started breaking. And that's Carl Hasty, the assembly speaker, and the attorney general, Letitia James of New York State. Right. Joe, you know how this works with the feds. Usually the state uh, parallel investigation with the feds. Right. So it, there's been no comment from Letitia James' office about any of this. She hasn't been contacted. So this is strictly... A federal operation. So this no is a federal. This is a federal indictment. They're not even working with the AG of New York. Absolutely not. There's been no Whoa. comment from her office. Zero. Which, well, which, look, look, go ahead. Which would tell you, Joe. Do you really think this all ends with Eric Adams? Oh no, of course not. Yeah. And, and you know what's interesting about this, and I want your thoughts. It's Sal Greco. Go. Uh, I've got a couple of websites for you. Either SalGreco.com or Help This NYCOP, Help This And you also check out his, his show. He's doing a great show on Rumble now, and follow him everywhere that you possibly can. As we're watching this unfold, we know that Eric Adams was in the good graces of the de of the Democrat establishment. I wonder what your thoughts are on this. He decided to go to the border and find out what was really going on because New York City was being inundated with illegal aliens. He goes to the border, and then suddenly, when he goes to, to the White House, he's ignored by Biden. He's ignored by Harris. He now is on the outs and wasn't even smart enough to realize he was on the outs. Do you think this is a political play because he, I don't know, made them look bad? So here's the actual story with Eric Adams. So Please. when it comes to the to the entire border, he ran on New York City being a sanctuary city. Right. He was always for open borders. He called himself the binding of Brooklyn. What he was complaining about was the money. He wanted money from the government to keep funding his little migrant shelters, which, by the way, Joe, he dropped in all the working class 
late, well, I mean, would say Republican leaning neighborhoods. Right. Bensonhurst, Staten Island. He put one right next to an all woman's uh, 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 school, like all girls school. I mean, Joe, I mean, that's questionable stuff that he's doing right there. So it's not about the migrant shelters at all. And in fact, Joe, the indictment goes back 10 years. It starts in 2014 when he's the Brooklyn Borough president. That's how this all starts. It has nothing. There's nothing on there that has anything to do with politics or will say anything to do with the migrant shelter. This is really a far stretch. I don't know what these uh, our fellow Republicans or MAGA people are reaching for. He's strictly said he's for open borders. He's never once said that he's against open borders or, yeah. or Joe Biden's policy. Well, listen, Sal, I played the video and the audio on my show. You're right. He has said it is a sanctuary city, always going to be a sanctuary city. I've shown that video. But he's also a politician, and mm -hmm. he wants to keep his power. So mm -hmm. I do think there was some shift when he started talking about going to the border and seeing what the problem was because he knew that the voters of New York City were turning on him because you guys are overrun. Really nice hotels are filled with illegal aliens. You've got jobs being taken by illegal aliens. You've got services going to illegal aliens. So Eric Adams, as much as he wants more illegal aliens in his town, suddenly he was going to start suing the bus companies. Suddenly he was going to start, start suing the, the drivers personally if they didn't stop bringing them. I think that he saw the political writing on the wall, don't you? He's very good with his, you know, pol politically. You could tell he he knows how to jump on a bandwagon because remember yeah. he talks out of both sides of his mouth. He's very good at that. You see him at the town halls once again in this issue. How he w very distinctly says he's for open borders, and now he has people saying that he's like Donald Trump. When uh, there is <laughs> two separate things, you know, Donald Trump will say Donald Trump was charged by the government using a statute from the 1800s. Right. If that's not political prosecution and persecution, I don't know what is. He was yeah. specifically targeted with a crazy statute from 100 plus years ago for one person. That's it. It yes. hasn't been used other than this one time. That's political. Not no, I, Eric Adams, who's yeah. being charged just like Previous politicians, Bob Menendez being the recent one. Right. And, uh, there were Brooklyn Democrats being charged a couple of years ago for the same stuff. Straw donor, bribery, wire fraud. It's not, it's not uncommon to be charged for this as a politician. Just wish he would be smarter, I guess, as the mayor of New York City. Right. It's uh, Sal Greco. Go to salgreco.com or help this NYCOP, help this NYCOP.com. Go check out his show over on Rumble. I'll, I'll put a dot on, on that point with this, and then I want to move on to something else. Eric Adams, if you're in, you're not getting indicted. And here's what I mean. Joe Biden is the most corrupt person we've ever had in this country. Mm -hmm. Period. End of story. The, the House just released absolute fact uh, without, without reproach that they took $27 million we know of from oligarchs and he's still the president of the United States. He hasn't been indicted. He hasn't been impeached. He hasn't been kicked out of office. So I guess my point is this. Eric Adams was in until he wasn't in anymore. You could be as corrupt and as nasty and as horrible like the Clintons. For as much for as long as you want to be, as long as you're in lockstep. I think he stopped being in lockstep, and that crossed the line. So I'm with you. I think he's a bad guy. I, I hope that if he's guilty, he gets the longest prison sentence we've ever seen. I don't think so, this would have happened had he stayed in line and shut his mouth. That's that's the only point that I'm making on that. But but I want to ask you, if you don't mind, get into the details that you know of, of the allegations, of the indictment. Where does the $10 million come from? Literally from taxpayers? Yes, because what's going on here uh, was... He is taking contributions from Turkey, which is an, a foreign entity, and right. then passing it off as if it was local people do, donating it to the campaign. In New York, it's this this eight to one match. They right. have this the funds there, so that all built up into ten million dollars total. And he also took lavish trips. So what they also did was convert some of this into. Uh, you know, uh, 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 the uh, the seats on the plane that they're talking about. Sure, sure. So there was it was fifteen thousand dollars. He says he wanted for fifty dollars fifty dollars a seat, and they uh, made an arrangement for a thousand dollars when the wow. seat was worth fifteen thousand. So you so you see, this is the kind of games they were playing with the you know donations and this kickbacks, and you even hear him on the phone or whatever on his text messages, and I think. He denied the genocide. He was saying, I'm, I'm for turkeys against the uh, Armenian genocide, which is wow. crazy that he would even say that. So he's for the uh, Muslim Brotherhood or something. Uh, I read that part. I go, wow, this guy really is a charlatan and a half. Like right. he says, if a Mexican comes in, he goes, this is the Mexico of New York. If it was uh, if it's uh, St. Patrick's Day, he says this is the Dublin of New York. It's a, he just changes 
whatever chameleon color he has to go on, as long as he's got his hand out and you're looking to give him money for any cause, he'll do and say whatever. He's the typical politician, Joe. Oh, absolutely. It's Sal Greco. Sal, we appreciate you coming on. So you've been exposing Eric Adams for a long time. Even during the pandemic, he was seen like at nightclubs partying oh, with no shit. mask on. So yeah. this guy has been a bad guy from, from day one. I think we've talked about this before, but for my listeners and viewers around the country, let's do it one more time. How does he get into this position of power? Here's a guy that was a, a was he the police chief? And then suddenly he was a racist guy about we don't want any white crackers here or something. Uh, and then suddenly he's the mayor of New York. How did this happen? Well, when he was in the police uh, department, Joe, he started as a transit uh, police officer. And back then it was the transit police department and then merged it to NYPD. Uh, he was a, 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 let's say, politically charged sergeant. He was uh, good friends with Al Sharpton, who he shouldn't have been associating with, who was a convicted criminal at the time. Then Louis Farrakhan. Then uh, Mike Tyson. Right. Uh, they found him associating with criminals, but they never uh, gave him a penalty or anything for that, which is funny how they did that for him and not for me. Right. But then but then he became a captain. He left the job and he went he ran for state Senate. Now, you remember as a state senator, Joe, he was involved in the race casino scandal, which cost his friends in the Senate. Hiram Ma Ma Maserat and uh, Malcolm Smith, they went to jail. They got indicted. Eric Adams' testimony, which is very damning, they declined to prosecute him, and Cuomo cut a deal with the race casino where 70% of the profits ended up going to New York State permanently. Wow. Eric wasn't indicted, and then he became the Brooklyn Borough president, and that's where they start this investigation in 2014. That's Amazing. the facts of Joe, Joe, uh, that, about Eric Adams, Joe. No, Eric Adams is uh, he's a mess and you've been calling him out since day one and and I, you know at first I was like wow Sal's really you know he's really obsessed with this then I went well, wait a second he's doing really good investigating then I was like holy crap look at what he found out about this nightclub and all that what do we know about this nightclub is it closed down now Joe they were closed down after four years of just Joe there was allegations from the police department from a human trafficking unit to the state liquor authority I had an incident there here in human trafficking unit is alarming. And the official yeah. documents up on my ex, uh, there was also the SLA revoked their, uh, their investigation. SLA is the state liquor authority. They had an open investigation, just pulled it without any, there's no reason why they never explained. Remember the shed they had, the party shed they had there. That was never that was ordered to be taken down by Eric Ulrich, by the way, to the indicted former buildings commissioner of uh, Eric Adams. He never took it down. The fire department said it was a fire trap. The health department found mice in the food. They were given an A rating anyway. Joe, wow. this guy endangered the public, poisoned the public. Uh, and, you know, it was a fire trap. Yet he, they always got away with it. It was party all the time over there. And, and Joe, you're going to be hearing about that nightclub very shortly. You're hearing a drip, drip, drip. In regards to the NYPD commission, a former commissioner at Caban, his twin brother, James, who was running around allegedly extorting people, but there's evidence of it in wow. nightclubs using NYPD security. That's official misconduct by his brother giving him a security detail. And then the other brother, Richard Caban, who owned Consa Frito. And then we all have all the all the people that were there, Joe. What exactly what were they doing? And they're looking into this, into this right now, Joe. The feds are looking at that. Doesn't stop with this buck does not stop with Eric Adams show. It's gonna be it's amazing. Very widespread. And you've been all over this from the beginning. Go and follow him on X. It's the Sal Greco, T H E S A L G R E C O. You'll see his pinned uh, his pinned tweet is as I predicted, NYC uh, NYC mayor. Eric Adams indicted. Go and check him out there. Go follow him there and go check out his show on uh, on Rumble. We were talking about this, I believe, before we started. What happens now? Because I know that Curtis, our good friend Curtis Lewa, is now somehow in play. If somehow you got Eric Adams stepping down or being kicked out of office, whatever happens, what's the process in New York to replace him? So we have, it's a two-pronged system here. Obviously, Kathy Hochul, the governor, could remove him at any moment. Or they have a committee that is actually designed from the city charter that would be uh, a couple of people from the city council, the head of corporation council, one of his deputy mayors. And out of the five, I believe, they only need three or four of them to say we vote to have uh, uh, him. He's incapacitated, so he can't be mayor. And they vote on oh, the city comptroller, and that's it. He's out. And then they'll have the public advocate would take over, which is Jumani Williams, who uh, nobody's really a fan of. He would become the mayor on a temporary basis until Kathy Hochul has about 90 days to announce a special election. And then it's a crapshoot, Joe. Anybody could run for mayor. And next to their name, it doesn't say Republican or Democrat. It's just a name. Wow. But the problem will be 
what, what we discuss, ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting, for those who don't know, is where you go and vote. You vote for your number one candidate, your number two candidate, your number three candidate. They add all those up, and the number one and the number two are going to take each other on. You can write somebody else in. It's all a bunch yeah. of garbage. This is the way Kelly Chewbacca, who's a great Republican from Alaska, lost to Lisa Murkowski because they use rank, uh, ranked choice voting. I'm a, I'm a guy who believes, and I think you are too, Sal. You go and vote, and you pick the person you want yes. to win. I don't want to rank anybody. And if you don't rank anybody second and third, that could actually hurt your candidate as well. So this is all messed up but please tell me that Kathy Hochul can't just say I picked that guy tell me that she can't appoint somebody she can't right no she cannot appoint someone all she could do is announce that she's going to remove Eric Adams and then that's when Jumani Williams would become mayor and I know people don't like it but unfortunately that's who New York City voted for him to be the public advocate you can't complain if you don't have it you don't you don't vote so unfortunately he will become the mayor in a temporary status and after that you will have uh, this special election, which unfortunately will be a ranked choice voting. And of course, our guy Curtis is definitely going to be involved. I, yeah. I pray, I really want Curtis to be the mayor. I know Me too. he's the only incorruptible candidate that there is. There's not a corrupt bone in his body. Yeah. He would take on down all, all these people, all these issues. He knows them. He The community loves him. It's just, can he win in a city that's virtually 70% Democrat. Well, I would hope so because they just found out what their Democrat mayor did. And, yeah. and you're right. I mean, listen, uncorruptible. The, the mob tried to kill him and they couldn't. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm going to get Curtis on very, very soon. Give me about 30 seconds or a minute, Sal, if you don't mind, just on NYC, uh, NYC crime. Is it still running rampant? Is it still out of control like you haven't seen before? Actually, Joe, the real, the true crime stats are that under Eric Adams' tenure as mayor, Violent crime is up 30%. Wow. What they're telling you is just a sham. It's cherry picking. And in all honesty, there's a lot of fugaziness with the numbers going on. I broke that down on my own show. You could check that out on Rumble or on YouTube on the on the Sal Greco show. At the Sal Greco show, you could check it out. I always put out a chart. Uh, my friend Sam Antar, if you check him out, he's the former CEO of Crazy Eddie's. Yeah. I always repost him. He has every week the, the actual crime stats. He breaks it down. And it's all for gazing this, Joe. And they're underreporting things. They're reclassifying crimes. And then they go on TV and tell you, oh, it's just it's just a perception you don't feel safe. Meanwhile, Joe, your eyes don't mistake you. Let's yeah. be honest. Look yeah. at New York City. You have all these people. You have prostitution over there in AOC's district. You know, AOC, who came out swinging against Eric Adams. Yeah. You know something? Consul Frito was in her district. She did nothing about it either. It's amazing. Not. Her district is a disgrace right now. But it yet is, she's going to remain in office, Joe. It's incredible. It, incredible. It's Sal Greco. Sal, we love you. We love the work that you've done on this. Go to the Sal Greco over on X and over on Rumble. Let's do it again soon, my friend. Thanks for making time today. You got it, Joe. Time American Civil Rights League. Don't forget it. We'll check it out. We're back after this. Stay right here.